going on everyone? It's Analyze Gaming here and today in this video I'm going to be talking about what I feel is the best Affliction Legendary to obtain. Uh, just a quick guide as well as how to get it and some things that have changed as far as uh, slot choice for your Legendary. I'm also going to be talking about gearing, uh, conquest cap, and some ways to really utilize yourself as we start the PvP season in Season 1 of Shadowlands. So let's jump into it. Alright guys, so the first thing that I really wanted to talk about is the Legendary for Affliction Warlocks. Um, as most of you pretty much know, that we're all going for the Legendary that's named Sacralash's Dark Strike. Um, I've done a lot of research about this and uh, honestly this is really what makes Affliction Warlocks work in a PvP setting, uh, particularly in arenas. The slow that comes from it is just is too vital for uh, a class like us with such low mobility to, to be able to survive if, if we don't have it. So um, getting this is really something that should be a top priority for us as Affliction Warlocks uh, as we start the PvP season. So uh, a lot of people have speculated the rotation for uh, these halls here in Torgas as what order they go. Um, some people have said that it's clockwise, uh, but looking at it a little more, it looks like and I'm hoping this is the case, uh, that actually the hall rotation is going to be moving counterclockwise. Uh, as you guys know, last week, week one, uh, the halls available to us was uh, the Soul Forges and the Upper Reaches. This week, it's the Fracture Chambers and Mort Regar. Uh, that kind of movement was a counterclockwise movement there. Uh, let's hope that it, that it is the case uh, for us as Affliction Rocks, because that means that tomorrow, uh, it will move to Skaldus Hall and Cold Heart, uh, which Skaldus Hall is the one we need. Uh, that's the hall that if it opens up we'll, right away, we're going to want to get in there and get uh, the Soul Ash that we'll need, as well as the recipe that we'll need to create our legendary piece. Now in my initial guide for Affliction Warlocks, I've kind of gone back and forth about, oh, you know, what's really the best slot to put these on? as far as your legendary goes at first i was kind of you know on the fence I, I thought maybe you know leg slot would be the best um to be able to get a higher increase of overall stats as pants give you a higher increase and then i read a guide that actually said to place it on your feet so i i changed my my mind about it uh, the guide that i've been going off of is uh, wallerick's guide on wowhead he's a multi rank one tournament competing warlock and he shares kind of his opinion on stat priorities and gearing. Uh, well, and when I looked at this guide, he had said that it would be a good idea to get the legendary for your feet, uh, mainly because you can't get haste burst feet from the PvP vendor. Uh, but I actually looked at this guide again, and as you can see here, he updated his guide on um, the 7th. So earlier this morning um, he has actually changed his opinion and is suggesting that you put your legendary back onto your legs okay uh, and that the verse mastery choice of boots is still going to give us enough versatility that it's really not going to make too much of a difference uh, but that the extra stats that you'll get from your legendary on your legs will make up for the lack of haste on your feet so uh, with that being said, and the update to the guide, and looking at what uh, Maldiva's doing, and Chanimal's doing, um, that is something that I too will be doing. Um, so, you can go to the auction house if you don't know a tailor friend, and you can buy these Grim Veiled cloth items. You can see the sandals that I'd already bought in preparation for making it onto my feet. Um, but I've changed that since, and I, I bought the legs. Um, essentially, the legs are like maybe 2,000 gold. I know that changes per server, but on my server, uh, Tychondrius, it is about 2K for these pants here. So tomorrow, uh, assuming that Scaldus Halls opens up, let's hope that it does, then uh, we're gonna go farm that. We're going to need to get the recipe as well as 2,000 Soul Ash, uh, which means that you may have to do a little bit of the second area in order to get up to that 2000 soul ash and then once you have your 2000 soul ash you can come in here you'll put your rank 2 grim veiled pants in here and it tells you that you'll need the 2000 and then you should be able to add in your recipe 
Make sure that you're using a haste and versatility missive from an inscriptionist. You can also buy those on the auction house. That's actually the profession I run. Um, and they're not too much money either. You can see them here. So you'll just slap those in there with your pants and your soul ash and should be able to get the legendary piece, Sacral Ashes Dark Strike. So I apologize again, guys, about all the confusion um, for you know which slot to put in your legendary. The, the piece that you want has, is the same. So I feel like, again, that's gonna be the best choice. Um, but for me, myself, and what I feel is gonna be best, guys, make sure that you're getting that on your legs uh, instead of your feet and head into the PvP season with a super awesome pant uh, that's gonna give you that corruption slow that we're all gonna need to be able to do all right in a PvP setting. Moving into season one of the Shadowlands PvP season, uh, hopefully you guys were able to farm enough honor to, to get capped and that uh, most of your PvP gear is already uh, rank three. If that's the case, then a lot of you are gonna be able to upgrade most of your gear uh, to rank five, which will be a 184 item level. Um, before you start doing any rated content, I would suggest trying to get uh, at least 75% uh, of your gear to rank 5. This is kind of a honor cost uh, sheet that I put together for upgrading your gear to rank 5. Now keep in mind that these costs reflect uh, on pieces of gear that are already rank 3. So if all of your gear is at rank 3 and you are uh, switching all PvP pieces up to rank 3, or excuse me, up to rank 5, uh, the total cost of honor is about 21,150 honor. Now keep in mind that some pieces of your gear that you got from a mythic dungeon, you may not need to, to swap over. So like my headpiece here, I was able to get a haste burst, 184. I probably won't be upgrading a headpiece uh, through honor for this. But other pieces of gear that aren't mythic zero, you know, 184 haste burst, I will be spending the honor to upgrade. Um, so I would do that first. Luckily for me, I was able to get to that 15,000 cap, so that's one of the first things I'll do is just upgrade all my gear to rank 5, as much of it as I can. Um, they finally released the Conquest cap for today. A lot of people were wondering, oh, you know, I got to play beta, or they looked at videos of people that got to play beta, and they saw on the beta that the Conquest cap was like over 9,000 Conquest. So a lot of people assumed, oh, you know, maybe we'll get to like farm out all our Conquest gear that first week. Um, but I think a lot of us that have played kind of knew that the conquest cap was going to be a lot lower for the first week of Shadowlands Season 1, which that is the case. Um, Blizzard finally uh, disclosed that the first week is going to have a cap of 550 and after that will increase by 550 per week. So what does that mean? Well, it means that when we start out our PvPing tomorrow in rated content, we're going to be able to get up to 550 conquest and then not earn any more for the week, uh, meaning that you're really going to be limited to one piece of gear that first week, or you're going to have the option to keep stockpiling it to buy something uh, different, uh, like a piece of armor that's maybe a, a lot more conquest. I myself think that one of the better things to do for the first week is to replace the pieces that you have on that aren't giving you your haste, um, specifically your wrist piece and um, one of your rings. So I know for me, uh, looking at the PvP vendor for honor and running mythics, I was not able to find any wrist piece that give you a um, that give you a haste first. But up here, there is a guy that sells a haste first 200 piece uh, wrist for 525 uh, conquest. That will be within the cap that we'll have. So I feel like that could be a first piece buy. Uh, also, getting one of these rings like this here uh, to give you an extra 118 uh, verse for the other ring that you're not going to be getting haste off of, I feel could also be. A really good first purchase so once you've bought either your ring or your wrist for the extra haste increase uh, you know there's a lot of things you can do to try to keep getting yourself a little bit higher in gear um, mythic season is starting so a lot of people are going to be running mythics to try to get gear but the way that they've changed mythics this expansion it's a, obviously a lot harder to get gear essentially what they've done is they've made it to where one person out of your group of five people will be able to get one piece of gear at the end of a mythic dungeon. 
So if you're running Mythic Pluses to try to get gear, I would really try to keep it to dungeons that offer multiple haste first pieces of gear for you. Um, namely, <clears throat> probably the Miss of Tarina Scythe. There's a lot of haste first gear in here that you could use as a PvP. I'm seeing at least two pieces of gear. Um, so if that's something you want to do, then you can. If you're willing to spend the time to climb up the Mythic uh, Plus dungeon table, then obviously there's some good gear that can be had. Um, there, here's kind of the comparison for what end of dungeon gear is going to be looking like. Um, keep in mind again though that each dungeon you're getting a 20% chance to get a piece of gear. Maybe getting up to, you know, Mythic Plus 7 for this first week if you're able to. Uh, and then kind of just keeping it there uh, is something that you, you could choose to do. Uh, I know for myself, I'm probably not going to be running many Mythic Pluses. I may run a miss of turn aside and then of course for myself uh, doing the other side I feel like is important to try to get a higher roll version of your rolling agony. I've heard that they've changed the drop rate on these as well as legendary recipes I'm, I'm really hoping that's true uh, and I've also heard a rumor I've not haven't found any concrete you know patch notes on it but I've heard that uh, the drops on these are different as far as you can still get a piece of gear and your conduit. Um, from a mythic plus so guys if you're wanting to do mythic plus uh, and you're a full heart you know I want to really optimize my item level I would focus on uh, miss I believe that you can keep getting gear out of it as long as your you know your keystone is going up and then as far as optimizing conduits try to do some of the, the other side so that you can get a higher conduit version of your rolling agony that's kind of my opinion on mythic pluses for week one as far as the raid goes, uh, it looks like the raid is opening up as well this Tuesday and it's going to be dropping item level 200 gear. Uh, if you, you're in a guild and you're thinking, oh, you know what, maybe I can get into the, to the raid with my guild and maybe get some gear that way. Um, right now, looking at the raid, there's really only one piece of haste first gear uh, that would benefit you as an Affliction Warlock at least um, that I've seen and that's your back piece um, that drops off the second to last boss keep in mind that with a PVE oriented content they're gonna place haste above verse you can see on my rank 3 PvP back piece that I have 10 more versatility than an item that has almost 30 item or more than 30 item levels higher uh, than than the PvP piece so um, looking at these keep that in mind that you're gonna you're gonna be sacrificing uh, a lot of versatility for gear that's obtained out of a PvE setting um, but, you know, if you're Destruction and you're wanting to do the raid, then obviously this Legendary Recipe is part of the raid. That's something that I would try to get done right away as a Destruction Lock. I feel like that's going to be one of the strongest Legendary Recipes to obtain for a Destruction Warlock. Um, Sludge Fist also drops some Haze vs. Legs, uh, which for Affliction won't matter to us because we'll have a Legendary in that slot. But as a Destruction, you might have your Legendary um, somewhere else and so these pants could be good for you as well. This first boss here on normal drops a higher version of our Shade of Terror. I feel like that's a pretty good conduit in PvP so that's something that I'll probably try to get done uh, for 20% more damage on whoever it is that I'm trying to uh, you know keep in a fear. I know the baseline for it that we get like when you join a coming is only 100% damage that they can take so this just gives you about 20% more um, and then also, if you guys have been looking at the Secured Vitality, uh, you can get that from the fourth boss. That's not a bad conduit. I feel like that can pair really well with Soul Rot and Drain Life. Um, just keep in mind that if that's kind of your go-to for extra defensives in an arena, that that's super easy to shut down with interrupts or stuns during Drain Life. Another source of gear that's going to be coming out this next week is World Bosses. Um, if you've been looking at world bosses, they drop 207 item level gear, uh, pretty high. Again though, for PvP, the stat priority, none of them are really haste first. I don't know that I would spend a whole lot of time trying to go and get gear from these just because of the lack of haste on them. Um, but if you're Destruction, then they drop this uh, Legendary as well, uh, giving you another recipe that I feel will be decent in uh, arenas or in a PvP setting for Destruction Warlock. So that's something I would try to grab uh, as far as world bosses go. Alright guys, so the last thing that I wanted to talk about as far as gearing goes for week one uh, is the advantages of getting your rating higher 
in PvP, uh, particularly most likely in either twos or threes. Um, I feel like the inflation, obviously, as the season starts, is going to be super high. Um, there's going to be a lot of, of normal, very high rated um, people that are playing threes uh, and twos in the arena on Tuesday and Wednesday. So it may be worth it to just get all your renowned stuff done uh, and get your legendary and uh, make sure all your honor gear is ranked five before going into threes, either Tuesday or Wednesday, um, to avoid bursting teams that are maybe, you know, normally like a 2,900 or 3,000 arena rating. Um, but if, if you want, you feel like that's okay, then get in there right away and try to get your rating up. Blizzard has kind of laid out the caps as far as what item level of gear you're going to be able to get in your weekly vault. So in the first week, so this coming December 8th up until the following Monday, if you're able to obtain a rank 4 rating in rated PvP, uh, which I believe rank 4 is 1800, um, then you're going to be getting a 220 piece of gear in your chest. Duelist uh, rank, at rank 5, you're going to be getting a 226 piece of gear to choose from out of your great ball. So getting to rank 1800 this first week is going to be huge. Uh, a 220 item level haste and verse PVP prioritized piece of gear in your weekly vault is very helpful. Um, you can find the vault here just to the left of the broker's den in the hall of holding. You just walk in and it'll be right here. Uh, and the way that the gearing system is set up for PVP is you'll get one option of gear to choose from if you obtain, I believe it's 1250 honor in rated content, two pieces of gear at 2500, and then you'll get three at 6250. So as long as you can get 6250 honor earned in rated PVP content, if you're at an 1800 rating in either twos, threes, or even RBGs, uh, then you're going to be able to choose from one of three. 220 item level pieces so um, getting up to that rating in week one is huge it's going to give you a huge advantage in the coming week allowing you to get a 220 item level piece of gear so my suggestions guys would be to get up to that 1800 rating in at least twos or threes or rbgs uh, and then if you're worried about not earning enough honor at the time through doing that if you don't hit that threshold of 6250 then farm rbgs i know if you're winning rbgs you're getting like 700 to 1000 honor a win so that's like six games win your six rated battlegrounds you should be able to get your cap uh, for your honor to get your three pieces and hopefully as well again you're at an 1800 rating in one of them so that you can get a 220 so in addition to that any gear that you have that isn't ranked five um, by earning that extra 6000 honor like i showed here uh, you're going to be well over your 21,150. So if you're capped now before the season starts at 15,000 and most of your gear is rank 3, you'll have more than enough to get everything to rank 5 to cap for the next week's vault and to hopefully get a 220 piece of gear in your vault. Alright guys, that pretty much brings an end to my video for gearing in PvP as the season starts uh, this next week. Super excited guys. I've been waiting to do rated content in Shadowlands pretty much since BFA started. So <laughs> I think the gearing system in BFA was horrible. Uh, and I think that the gearing system in Shadowlands still could use some tweaks here and there. But for the most part, it's pretty good. I think that we're going to be really happy with the way that Blizzard has really taken the approach on PvP gearing for Shadowlands. I do think it's going to uh, start out a little bit slower uh, with only that 550 Conquest cap each week. Um, but by week three or week four, uh, we're going to be getting over 2,000 conquests a week. Uh, and we're going to be having our weekly vault to choose from up to three different pieces of gear. Uh, and that's only if you're doing just PvP. That's not even counting if you're uh, doing Mythic Pluses on the side or trying to, to run the raid as well. Um, so, super excited guys. Just a quick overview summary. Just remember, uh, get all your pvp gear to rank three tonight if you can uh, once the season starts tomorrow december 8th then go ahead and upgrade as much of it as you can to rank five uh, whatever remaining pieces you don't have you should be able to get enough honor through running your rbgs or through getting your rating up to 1800 and twos and threes uh, to make up for those other uh, pieces that aren't rank five 
uh, and then get your legendary piece guys hopefully the rotation goes counterclockwise that we get Scaldus Hall uh, make sure to get it on a rank 2 legs uh, so that you have that higher stat increase also really quick I'm going to be uh, posting and listing uh, the links for where I'm getting my information as far as what pieces of gear to prioritize I will also be listing a picture in my description of how much honor you need to get from rank 3 to rank 5 and how much each piece of gear is costing for conquest and a total uh, amount of conquest that you'll need to at least buy everything but your weapon uh, so we're not going to be able to get a, a conquest weapon until you've earned 5,000 conquests and you get the achievement associated with that. Um, you can find that achievement in arenas in the achievement list on season one of Shadowlands and it will tell you uh, that you need to get 5,000 conquests and then the weapon should open up to us. Uh, but look for those guys if, you, if you're looking for kind of where I'm getting my information as far as uh, what I feel is going to be optimal in the PvP setting for Affliction Warlocks. So have fun. Uh, again, I'm super pumped, guys. Uh, let me know if there's anything you feel I've missed out or any questions you have about certain things. Uh, as the season gets going along, I'm going to try to make another video about like gems and enchants and things like that that I hope will give you a little bit more of an edge as well uh, in arenas. So thanks for watching, guys, and we will catch you on the next one.